We've grabbed our Gorilla Tape and we've marked off the thickness here so that you guys can visually see what we're going to try and accomplish. You might be old if you remember Dr. Doolittle and the Push Me Pull You. So that's what we're making. These are rear bumpers. They're actually rear bumpers for a Jeep, as you can see here. And this one here, I ordered without the receiver hitch welded into it. And that's because underneath here, we've got our actual frame mounted receiver hitch. So in a future video, we're going to work on turning that whole assembly into a rear bumper on this. But this video's focus is this front bumper, which is going to look a lot different right now than it probably did in the thumbnail you clicked on. Right now, we've got it propped up on an ATV jack. We've got a quibble with this front end in that it hit a ditch on that side by the previous owner, so it's all quirked a little bit over here. So we're squaring off from here over and just going to call it good whatever turns out on this side. We've got a little bit of a fat lip going on, which is not too bad. So what we're going to do now... I've got a template here. It is currently 28 degrees, and so my work area is freezing together just in the amount of time it took me to go eat a sandwich. So we've got this right here that we templated out. We're going to cut a piece that will bring that out, and then we'll put another little piece right in here. And then, in order to mount this, sorry for the walk around and everything, but I have to get this in before the camera freezes to the point it stops working. So Jeep uses these insert mounts, which are these right here. So what I figure is in underneath here, Whoa, there we go. I almost fell over. In underneath here, we've got the holes right there. So that should mount just about on top of that frame rail and then be able to screw through and adjust on those because Jeep mounts them this way with this piece down. But I think if we rotate them and we mount them with this piece up, we should be able to weld it to the top of the frame rail and then line it up accordingly. There we go. A little hitbox getting it done. This is just tacked in place, totally gobbly gook. So we had to bring this out away from the frame and so what I'm going to do is make sure that this slides in, that I can hit all four of the bolt holes. And then I'm going to cut a plate that goes across here and comes up in underneath this and ties all of this together solid to the front of this. That way it can't go anywhere. There we go. Weld it across the top. Weld it across the underside edges. In all honesty, I probably should triangulate something here, which I might do later. I need to do a finish weld on behind this, but I'm going to wait because eventually I'll have a beam that runs underneath in order to tie this piece in. But for now, as far as that's concerned, if I grab it, this doesn't move. The van does. So now, i got to do the other side. Get this thrown on here, and then start figuring out the side skirts. Temperature is dropping at the end of day one. I figured we would set things on here just to get a look as to how they sit before everybody gets mad at me for cutting up a brand spanking new bumper because now we got to make some, some Batman things off of the side of here. And I know this winch is small. All of you that are new to the channel, 
I don't tend to do a lot of automotive stuff. What I tend to do is a lot of builds like this and some other things. We've got the racer in there. I used to buy, swap, sell, flip about 50 machines sometimes in a summer. Now that the economy is starting to come back around, I'm hoping we can get back into it. That is the point of this winch. This winch is because there have been many, many, many times that it was far easier to get the nose of my truck into some place in order to be able to twitch out a lawn tractor or something than it was to back into the spot. And that's why I wanted this. So this right here is an off-road series, 4,500 pound, big ATV winch with synthetic rope. And it's got the controller and everything. And we've also got some big old rope shackles here. And we've also got the shackles that go on the front of this that came with this. So for those of you that wanted to see what this would look like before we ended up molesting this bumper, that's your answer. Tomorrow, we start grinding that down and we start messing with it. Well, start of day two. Got to start my day off by feeding the little mini Velociraptors some leftovers. There we go. And open up the door. And yes, those are chicken nuggets on that plate. They are omnivores, cannibalistic, and if you don't feed them, they will go cannibalistic. Anyways, so I still feel like junk, still sick, but you know, show must go on. Make sure you post in the comments down below what your favorite home remedy is in order to feel better when you're like snotty and mucusy and all that other fun jazz. I usually personally like uh, eucalyptus oil. I put it over my shirt and stuff down below and things like that. That's my favorite way to treat it because I think Vicks is a bunch of overpriced hooey. But anyways, comment down below. What's your favorite way to go and get down with the sickness? All right, so today's goal is bat wings off the side of this thing. So these are pallets that are made for forklifts to be able to pick up. And normally these things are for like big ATVs and snowmobiles and stuff like that. But a lot of companies, once they hit the point that they start to bend, will immediately get rid of them. They're not worth the cost of repairing they're better off just to wait for another one that's in good condition. So these get given away for free. Free is good. We've got like four of these, so we're probably going to make some bumpers for the Ranger this summer out of another pair. But anyways, so the edge of this is exactly the same width as good old-fashioned duct tape. Well, Gorilla Tape. Up here in Maine, we use Gorilla Tape because it's good to about 20 degrees, whereas duct tape, the moment you hit freezing, is worthless. So if we turn around here and we come over, we've grabbed our Gorilla Tape and we've marked off the thickness here so that you guys can visually see what we're going to try and accomplish. That'll make the third end cap piece that I've cut off and used the magnet to hold in place to decide on. I think this is what we're going to go with. I like how it matches with the fender. I like how it comes in and brings it in. In all honesty, to do this over again, I would have made it right about here instead of out here. But I wanted to come out as far as the tires come out, just in case. We got a lot of finish welding to do once we take the bumper off on the underside. Before we end up pulling everything in order to paint it. 
And like I said previously, the bump out does match the tire. We're going to duplicate that to the other side. What's hard to make out in film is there's also this body line bump that comes out as far as the tire on the van. So this kind of matches that. And I think once it's blacked out, I think it will be a lot better looking than it is now. But I don't know. We're calling these bat wings because that's what they remind me of right now, the way the shapes are. Yep, at 20 degrees, nothing likes to start. We also most definitely have got to get the other set of tires that we have for it put on. But let's go take a look at what's going on over here. Uh, let me see. Uh, well, it's running really good. Unfortunately, the ice build up, ripped that off, but that's okay. There we go. Let's step back away from it. We're probably about 15 feet or so away. Now, obviously, I can't do a finished paint job in these conditions, but I would say that will work for now. All right, well, when I bring you guys back, we will be working on the rear bumper in order to get that done. And then we'll go from there. <laughs> 